Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. In this video, I will bring to you the agriculture current affairs of the last six months. This video will only be in English language so that I can reach out to as many people as I can. Now this is set one and I have prepared three sets of agriculture current affairs. Given that there is a very important exam on 31st of July, I will upload the other two sets also tomorrow morning. So let's start with the agriculture current affairs of 2022, last six months. Now I have also included some important current affairs from December as well. So in a way, it is the agriculture current affairs of last seven months, including December. The first question is, the government of India has approved rupees 2516 crore for computerization of the functional 63,000 primary agriculture credit societies. How much amount will be given to each primary agriculture credit society to upgrade its capacity? So approximately 4 lakh rupees will be given to every PACS to increase their capacity. What kind of capacity? So every primary agriculture credit society will be computerized. It will also have the provision for cyber security, for data storage, cloud uh, storage, hardware support and for that it needs money and 4 lakh rupees will be given to each of them. Now be careful, if there is any PACS which is already computerized, then it will get 50,000 rupees for hardware and software support. If it is already computerized, 50,000, otherwise 4 lakh. Now why is primary agriculture credit society so important? So if you look at the cooperative credit institutions of India and if you look at their structure, it is a three tier structure. At the first tier, we have the rural cooperative credit institution and urban cooperative bank. Then we have this short term and long term structure. So basically in this three tier structure, the PSES occupy a very important position because farmers, they take loan directly from PSES. In fact, 40% of the KCC loans in India is given by PSES. And can you tell me how much amount maximum loan that a farmer can take through the Kisan credit card? It is 3 lakh rupees. And also remember, out of the 3 lakh, maximum 1.6 lakh is the guarantee free or collateral free loan. So through the KCC, Kisan credit card, a farmer can take up to 3 lakh rupees of loan. And 1.6 lakh out of that maximum is the collateral free loan. Now 95% of all the KCC loans, they are taken through the PACS and that is why it is very important. It is absolutely customary that their capacity have to be increased. And when was the first PACS set up in India? It was set up in 1904. So PACS, we can say that it is a basic unit and smallest cooperative credit institution in India. And it works at the grassroot level, that is at the Gram Panchayat and the village level. And 41%, exactly precise number is 41% of the KCC loan given by all the entities in the country and 95% of all the KCC loan given to the small and marginal farmer is given by Primary Agriculture Credit Society. I repeat, 41% of the entire KCC loan and 95% of the loan that is given to small and marginal farmer is given by PACS. Let's move on now. The International Day of the Cooperatives was celebrated on which day? So, International Day of the Cooperatives, remember it was the 100th International Day of the Cooperatives. So in India also we have lot of cooperatives. We have Amul, we have IFCO, we have NAFAD. I mean, these are doing some great work in India. These are some of the great success stories of India. The companies like Amul, Nandini in Karnataka, uh, we have IFCO. All of these are well-known cooperatives in India. In fact, in India we have 8.5 lakh cooperatives and they cater to 90% of the villages of India. So this shows how much important the cooperatives are in the Indian story. And by the way, the government has created a separate ministry also, which is called Ministry of Cooperatives. And this ministry is headed by Amit Shah. This is a brand new ministry that was created. So it was celebrated when? On 4th of July in Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. And let me also tell you what was the theme for the 100th International Cooperatives Day. It was Cooperatives Build a better world. Cooperatives build a better world. This was the theme of the International Cooperatives Day. Is it understood? Okay. And when did the cooperative movement start in India? Just to give you some static background. So 
in our constitution the 97th amendment act of 2011 added a new part in the constitution that is part 9b right after part 9a part 9a you know is about municipal municipal right uh, but uh, the urban local body whereas the part 9b is regarding the cooperatives it was added part 9b uh, by the 97th amendment of 2011 and the word cooperatives was added after the unions and associations in article so the word cooperatives you will find in which article of the constitution article 191c that is part 3 of the constitution article 191c and let me also tell you that in the directive principles of state policy we have a article article 43b so a new article article 43b was added in the directive principles of state policy regarding the promotion of the cooperative societies the promotion of cooperative societies article 43b of the dpsp says so is it clear or not clear okay recently which of the following project has been launched pan india to tackle pink ballworm in cotton now ballworm was a huge problem for cotton then we made bt cotton what is bt cotton it is a transgenic crop we put in the gene of a bacteria called bacillus thurigenesis in the cotton so bacillus thurigenesis in short bt it became bt cotton and bt cotton was resistant to ballworm and now more than 90 percent of the cotton that is grown in india is bt cotton almost a monopoly right but there is another problem now the new bt cotton varieties you know they are you know they are attacked by pink ballworm so pink ballworm has become resistant to the bt variety and it is attacking the bt cotton now so this there is a project now which has been started in india and this project is called project bandhan it is called project bandhan now who is running project bandhan project bandhan is being run by central institute of cotton research central institute of cotton research by the way where is this institute it is in Nagpur the headquarter of this institute is in Nagpur in Maharashtra so how are they helping what is the project about so basically in Punjab in Haryana in other some parts also pink ballworm attack is very severe very serious right now lot of crop millions of hectares of crop is getting destroyed every day so they have started a project central cotton Central Institute of Cotton Research Nagpur and I will tell you what they are doing so they have made something called PB knot PB knot is a rope okay this rope you tie it to the cotton plant it is a special kind of a rope you tie this rope to the cotton plant and it will re release a chemical this chemical is called gossiplure gossiplure and gossiplure chemical is like a scent it is like a perfume what this chemical will do it it will confuse the male ballworm insect and prevent it from mating with the female ballworm as a result the ballworm population will be decreasing it will be kept in check this is project bandhan a very innovative project they are tying a rope called pb knot to the plant and then they will release a chemical called gossiplure and gossiplure will confuse the male adults so that they don't mate with the female ballworm and the ballworm population therefore will reduce thereby protecting the cotton right and project bandhan will be implemented in 62.5 acre of land in 19 clusters covering total 1200 acres in the country all of this information you don't need to remember these factual information just remember what is project bandhan because it is extremely important and by the way which Indian state is the leading producer of cotton in India it is Gujarat Gujarat by far is the leading producer of cotton but there are other states also which have lot of cotton for example Maharashtra Telangana Andhra these are cotton belts basically because they have lot of black soil also which is called ragur which is the main soil for growing cotton and by the way Indian government they have their own brand of cotton also called Kasturi so Kasturi is the official government of India brand which was launched by the Ministry of Textiles on the World Cotton Day and very recently the government has also started an organization 
called Cotton Council of India and Suresh Bhai Kotak has been made the chairman of Cotton Council of India. Now the job of the Cotton Council of India is to promote the production and export of cotton. right? And Central Institute of Cotton Research which is in Nagpur was set up in 1976. It works under the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. So I hope that is clear. And by the way, India is the largest producer of cotton. Cotton sometimes is also called as white gold. And 23% of the world's cotton is growing in India. It is grown abundantly in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and even in Punjab and Rajasthan and Haryana also. Okay, let's move on finally. Recently, who among the following inaugurated the ONDC Nabard Grand Hackathon? Now, ONDC, you know what is ONDC, right? It is Open Network for Digital Commerce. Basically, if you have an account on Amazon, you can cannot buy from Flipkart. Similarly, vice versa. And this is Amazon, Flipkart and Misho and these big e-commerce companies are not allowing the small retailers to sell online. I mean, they can sell online, but ultimately there are very big dealers so it is not a democratized process. What ONDC will do, it is a UPI-like arrangement where this entire process will be democratized. So ONDC is the democratized e-commerce of the government of India. You will be able to post your product on ONDC and it will be searchable through every e-commerce platform of India. Understood? Number one. Number two, government is also encouraging these local retailers to sell online through ONDC. And you don't have to pay any cut to Amazon and Flipkart. So Amazon and Flip, Flipkart and Misho and these, they take a percentage of the sales. Whereas on ONDC, it's the entire money is yours. So like that, we are democratizing the e-commerce. Now Nabard organized a grand hackathon. What is hackathon? Hackathon is a competition where you give certain problems or challenges and you invite solutions. So Nabard is backing ONDC and uh, the hackathon was organized recently. It was inaugurated by Piyush Goel. He is the Minister for Commerce. And by the way, Nabard recently celebrated its 41st anniversary. Nabard was set up in 1982. National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. So ONDC is an initiative of DPIIT, Ministry of Commerce. What is DPIIT? Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Is that clear? And who is the chairman of Nabard right now? It is G.R. Chintala. Govinda Rujulu Chintala is the chairman of Nabard at the moment. Let's move on. The Department of Food and Public Distribution, they will organize the National Conference on Food and Nutrition Security in which city? So it will be organized, it was organized on 5th of July and it was organized in the capital New Delhi. Department of Food and Public Distribution, they organize one day national conference on food and national security. Now what is the status of food security in India. What is the status of food security? So food security is a very important issue in India. We have a National Food Security Act. National Food Security Act came in 2013. It was notified on 10th of September 2013 and it covers almost 67 percent or two-third the population of India. It covers 50 percent of our urban population and it covers almost 75 percent of our rural population. How does National Food Security Act work? So we have a concept of one nation, one ration card and all the 36 states and union territories of India, they are now implementing one nation, one ration card. In fact, Assam recently became the 36th and the last state or union territory to enable one nation, one ration card. Now, if you have a ration card in India, then you will get the benefit of National Food Security Act. How? So in National Food Security Act, there are two kinds of categories, right? One is called the PHH category or priority household. And the second one is called Antyode Anyojana category. So if you are a AAY category, that means you are at the poorest of the poor. And Antyode means the person who is standing in the last in the line. So Antyode Anyojana household will get 35 kg of food grains per month. 35 kg per family per month at a very subsidized price. What is the subsidized price? It is 3 to 1. So 3 rupees per kg is the rice, 2 rupees per kg is the wheat and 1 rupee per kg is the coarse grains. 35 kg per month is given per family per month to AY category. What about the PHH category? So PHH category is the priority household in short PHH and PHH category gets 5 kg per person per month. 
Now here it is per family per month, 35 kg. Here it is per person per month, 5 kg. Again, 5 kg, the person gets at again 3 to 1. 3 kgs per kg rice, 2 kg, uh, 2 rupees per kg is wheat and 1 rupee per kg is the coarse grains. So that is how we control our problem of food. And we also are running, of course, the Pradhan Mantri, uh, you know, An Yojana, where um, in the An Yojana, we are giving 5 kg of grains, that is wheat or rice, depending on the dietary preference, free of cost. The full name is Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana. Right? This was because of the COVID that we are giving extra 5 kg and this is completely free of cost. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana. And we are distributing the food through the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution in India. And we also have a portal called Anvitran Portal. Anvitran, Anvitran means distribution of food. Anvitran Portal is the portal that has all the data of the distribution of food grains within a state. I hope that is clear. Let's move on. How much financial support is given to each member of the self-help group under the Pradhan Mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprise scheme. Now this is a very important scheme from exam point of view. It has recently completed two glorious years. So what are we trying to do in this? First of all, let me tell you the answer. It is 40,000 rupees support that is given to every member of the self-help group, which is engaged in the food processing activity. Now let me explain to you what all of this is. Food processing, you know what is food processing. For example, if you have a potato and you convert it into chips, then for chips you will get more money than what you will get for potato. This is called food processing. Similarly, if you sell sugarcane, you will get less money. But if you take out the juice of sugarcane and you package it in a container, you brand it, then you will get more money because this is a processed food. So it is always better to sell processed food because by selling the processed food, the farmers can get more income. So what, are, what we are trying to do in this scheme, this scheme, Ministry of Food Processing Industries, they launched this scheme called PMFME or Prime Minister Formalization of Micro Food Processing Enterprises. All these small micro food processing industries, we are trying to support them. And we are trying to support them. What is our target? So this scheme is expected to generate a total investment of 35,000 crore and 9 lakh is the employment generation that is projected because of this scheme. 35,000 crore of total investment it will generate and we are trying to create brands out of the locally famous products so in a way we are following the concept of one district one product if there is any product which is very famous in a particular district we process it we package it and we sell it for a premium we are trying to create as many brands as we can so this scheme PMFME uh, provides a seed funding or an initial funding or seed capital of 40,000 to every self-help group per member. So if there are 10 members, they can get 4 lakh. 40,000 is given for every member of a self-help group. Number one. Number two, if you want to upgrade your micro food processing unit, then you will get a capital subsidy of 35% to a maximum ceiling of 10 lakh per unit. 35% or 10 lakh, whichever is uh, whichever is lower. Understood? 35% of the eligible project cost with a maximum of 10 lakh per unit. 35% is the capital subsidy if you want to upgrade your, uh, your micro food processing unit. Similarly, if you want to uh, develop a common infrastructure for any cluster, whether you want to have a food processing lab, cold storage, warehousing, again, you will get 35% credit linked grant from the government. So these are small, small steps which help, which go a long way in promoting the unorganized food processing sector in India. Let me tell you the food processing sector in India, you know, contributes hugely to the employment. The unorganized sector, food processing sector is organized and unorganized. Unorganized is 74% employment and organized only 26% employment. So this shows that we need to organize this unorganized food processing sector. And 66% of these micro food processing enterprises are located in the rural areas and 80% of them are family-based businesses. 
Okay, let's move on now. And I will tell you later in the video some brands also that we have created because of this PMFME scheme. The first edition of the State Ranking Index for National Food Security Act was released. Which state secured the first position among the general states category? So I told you about the National Food Security Act. Now we have created an index. When you create an index, you create a comparative analysis. So which is that state in India which has the best performance in, in, in uh, National Food Security Act implementation? So the best state in this regard is Odisha. Odisha performed the best in this category. And then there was one more category, which is the small states. You know, the, the small state, the Himalayan states in that Tripura performed the best. So you can see here, Odisha was the best performer, followed by UP and then Andhra. And uh, in, the, un, in the special state, small state or Himalayan states and union territory, it was Tripura. Recently, the first India Animal Health Summit was held in which city? It's a beautiful question. And I'll tell you why. So in India, we now have a concept called One Health. Have you heard about this concept called One Health? So now, you know, there are three types of health. One is the human health. One is the animal health. And one is the environmental health. A-H-E, animal, human, environment. If you take these three types of health, then it is the real health. Because if there is a human health, but the surrounding animals are ill, then obviously the human beings cannot have a good health. The disease will be transferred from animal to humans, like we are seeing in monkeypox these days, which has been created, which has been declared as a global health emergency now by the WHO, more than 17,000 cases in 75 countries. Similarly, your environment can't be, can't be poor, you know. For example, if you are living in a place which has a lot of pollution, then how can you remain healthy? So, the, the old concept where the human health was seen in isolation is no more uh, valid. It does not hold good now. So, we have a concept of one health. One health means human health, animal health and environmental health. And this one health concept has been launched in two states of India. The first state was Uttarakhand where it was launched. And the second state, very recently, it has been launched in Karnataka or in Bengaluru. So, Uttarakhand and Karnataka are the two states of India where One Health concept or One Health project was launched. It was launched first in Uttarakhand and now in Karnataka. And therefore, we are focusing now on animal health because it is a part, one third of the, of the One Health project. So, this summit took place recently in New Delhi and Purushottam Rupala, Purushottam Rupala is the Minister for Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairy. He inaugurated the first India Animal Health Summit. By the way, we also have a COVID vaccine for the animals called Anokovax. And Anokovax has been made by whom? It is made by an institute that is based in Hisar in Haryana state, which is called National Research Center on Equins. Equins is nothing but horses. In Hindi, we call it Rashtriya Ashwa Anusandhan Sansthan or National Research Center on Equines Hisar Haryana has launched Anokovax, which is the first COVID vaccine for the animals. I hope this is clear. Let's move on now. Recently, which of the following has become the first state in India to connect one district mart with the open network for digital commerce? Now, how beautiful will it be that you start selling OTOP products on ONDC? ONDC, we already know, is an e-commerce platform owned by the government of India. And ODOP is what? One district, one product. So all the famous products, you put a branding based on the district name and then you start selling them on ONDC. So the first state to actually connect both of these is UP. In fact, Uttar Pradesh pioneered the concept of one district, one product. Is it understood? The answer is Uttar Pradesh. According to the State of the Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report, stunting in children under 5 years of age in India was which percent in 2020? So this is a new report that was released, you can see, by a lot of organization like Food and Agriculture Organization, UNICEF, IFAD, that is International Fund for Agriculture Development, by World Health Organization. So a lot of organizations have come together, even UNICEF. So a lot of organizations have come together to release this report. So what does this report say? So, according to this report, you know, the stunting problem in India was 30.9%. 30.9% was the stunting in India. And I will tell you more data related to India. So, 
the number of undernourished people in India and they took a range from 2019 to 2021 which a great part of this was a COVID time also the number of undernourished people in India they were 224.3 million or 22.43 crore right and in terms of percentage the undernourishment in India is 16.3 percent so this is 16.3 percent of India's population which suffer from undernourishment and let me tell you how many Indians can't afford a healthy diet. So the number of people who can't afford a healthy diet in 2020 who could not afford a healthy diet was 973.3 million or 97 crore. That is 70.5% of India's population could not afford a healthy diet because they lack money or resources. And the stunting was 30.9%. What about the problem of obesity? So the prevalence of overweight children which are under 5 years of age was 1.9% in 2020 and in the adult population the obesity is 3.9%. What about the number of the anemic women in India? Anemic women were approximately 53%. 53% they are between the age of 15 to 49 years. 15 to 49 years. And how many people in the entire world they were affected by hunger in 2021. So 828 million people were affected by hunger in 2021. So like that lot of data was given by this report. National Fish Farmers Day is celebrated on which day? It was recently celebrated also in July 10th of July 2022. So it was celebrated as at National Fisheries Development Board in Hyderabad. So what is this day? Why do we even celebrate this day? It was the 65th National Fish Farmers Day and something great happened on 10th of July 1957 at a place called Angul which is in Odisha. So what happened? So there were two Indian scientists. One is Dr. Hiralal Chaudhary. Dr. Hiralal Chaudhary and his friend or colleague Dr. Ali Kunhi. They both, they both achieved induced breeding in the fishes and because of induced breeding the number of fish and fish production in India has increased significantly. So that is why this day 10th of July became significant. This experiment happened on 10th of July 1957 and that is why we celebrate National Fish Farmers Day on 10th of July and this was the 65th anniversary. By the way this is Blue Revolution. And this is sustainable development goal number 14. There are total 17 sustainable development goal. The 14th one says life below water. And we also have Pradhan Mantri Matasse Sampada Yojana for increasing the fish production in India. This is a scheme that was started in 2016. And now the million dollar question. What is the objective of Pradhan Mantri Matasse Sampada Yojana? What is the target? So the target is we want to have 22 million metric ton of fish production in India or just simply remember 22 MMT this much of fish production we want in India 22 MMT by 2025 and right now our product our fish production is approximately 13.58 MMT so we want to increase it to 22 MMT by 31st of March 2025 this is the aim of Pradhan Mantri Matasse Sampada Yojana the Natural Farming Conclave was organized in which city in India? Natural Farming Conclave was organized recently in Surat which is in Gujarat. Right and let's say this is Ganga River. So on both the banks 5 kilometer natural farming corridor is being developed along both the banks of River Ganga. And in Surat 75 farmers from every village they will be taught natural farming right so what is natural farming number one natural farming is basically chemical free so we are not using any pesticides insecticides or fertilizers we are not using it and it is mainly livestock based as natural as it gets we use local animals and we don't use any chemicals that's it that is natural farming now this farming natural farming was started by which person the concept of natural farming was um, introduced by a farmer from Japan called Masanobu Fukuoka. 
His name was Masa Nobu Fukuoka. He was a Japanese farmer and philosopher. And he wrote a book in 1975 called One Straw Revolution. And it is in this book that he started the concept of natural farming. By the way, in India, we also have something called zero budget natural farming. Now, this is a completely different concept. Here we use, you know, four pillars. One is called Jeev Amrut. One is called Beej Amrut. We use Achadan or Mulching. And we use Vapas, which is a condition where both air molecules and water molecules are present in the soil. This helps in reducing the irrigation requirement or the water requirement. This is called Vapas. And Achadan, Achadan is mulching. It protects the top soil during cultivation and does not destroy it by tilling. And then we have Bijamrit. Bijamrit is a mixture of neem leaves and pulp, tobacco and green chilies that are prepared for insects and pest management. Bij Amrit. And then we have Jeev Amrit. Jeev Amrit is a mixture of fresh cow dung and cow urine. It, it, it is also a mixture of, so we mix cow dung, cow urine, jaggery and pulse floor, water and soil that we have to apply on a farmland. So Jeev Amrit, Bij Amrit, Achadan and Vapas. These four are the pillars of zero budget natural farming. Now zero budget natural farming was uh, started by which person? So there was a famous scientist, agriculture scientist called Subhash Palekar. He is credited with zero budget natural farming. The Coffee Board of India has signed a MOU with which of the following regarding the breeding of climate resilient varieties and assessing the carbon sequestration potential of coffee. So coffee plants, they can absorb a lot of carbon. And see, we want to become a net zero country, net zero carbon emitter, carbon neutral country by 2070. So climate resilient variety of coffee, their assessment will be done by ISRO. ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, MOU has been signed by the Coffee Board and Coffee Board of India is located in Bengaluru. We also have a tea board. Tea board is located in Kolkata and jute board is also located in Kolkata. We have different boards uh, in India. Now there is an institute called Central Coffee Research Institute which is located in Chikmangaluru in Karnataka. Chikmangaluru and Kodagu, these are the main places in Karnataka where the coffee cultivation is done. We also have Vyanad Robusta Coffee, we have the Araku Valley Coffee in Andhra Vishakapatnam. So there are different areas which are rich in coffee. Now coffee emits carbon dioxide, so it is a net carbon deficit crop, right? But coffee plants also have this capacity uh, of absorbing carbon or carbon sequestration. So ISRO will evaluate all of this and uh, studies will be done uh, for this. Recently, by the way, in India, Karnataka is the leading coffee producer. Recently, Union Minister Mansuk Mandavia said that India will become self-sufficient in urea production by 2025. So related to this, nano urea liquid is developed by which of the following? So very important question, liquid nano urea is being developed by Indian Farmer Fertilizer Cooperative. And see, we have to import urea. So let me tell you some figures. We need how much urea in our country every year? Our requirement of urea is 350 lakh ton. Out of that, 260 lakh ton we produce in India, but 90 lakh ton we have to import from other countries. So total we need 350 lakh ton. We fall short by 90 lakh ton, right? So the minister said that by 2025, we will increase our production. We will increase our production of urea. So instead of 260 lakh, which we are producing now, we will be producing something around 320 lakh by 320 lakh ton by 2025. And we will also produce 44 crore bottles of liquid nano urea. And these 44 crore bottles, one bottle is 500 ml that is sold in the market. 44 crore bottles are equal to 200 lakh ton of conventional urea bags, right? So one bottle of liquid nano urea is equal to one bag of urea. And it is much more cheaper and much more efficient also. Understood? It requires less storage space also. So liquid nano urea is the way forward. 
right now our capacity is 5 crore bottles per year but we will increase it to 44 crore bottles by 2025 and at which place ifco has set set up its first liquid uh, nano urea plant in india it has been set up at kalol in gujarat kalol is in gujarat and that is where the first commercial liquid nano urea plant of ifco has been set up in india very very important and recently the first liquid nano urea plant in south india was inaugurated in bengaluru and we also need to be concerned about the urea subsidy which is approximately 70000 crore per year this is just for urea alone right so liquid nano urea will help us it will reduce our fertilizer subsidy bill also currently our fertilizer subsidy bill if you take all the fertilizer not just urea it is more than 2.5 lakh crore according to the budget so we want to produce as much liquid nano urea as possible the answer was ifco let's move on now what is the tagline of the logo which has been recently introduced by the central government for certification of authenticity for jute products in india so this is the mark if you want to know whether the jute product that you are buying is authentic always see this jute mark the answer is jute mark india and in india west bengal is the leading producer of jute we also call it golden fiber so there was a golden fiber revolution for jute and national jute board was set up in 2008 it works under the ministry of textiles jute grows in the well-drained alluvial soil india is the largest producer of jute in the world followed by bangladesh and then china so in india jute is grown mainly in west bengal but it is also grown in bihar odisha assam andhra pradesh etc and jute is used for making gunny bags mats ropes carpets and all of these handicrafts also recently jammu kashmir has signed an agreement with which of the following states to boost the cultivation of saffron and other temperate crops so jammu kashmir has signed an agreement with sikkim jammu kashmir will try to help sikkim in producing saffron right now almost 90 percent of the saffron that is produced in india is grown in jammu kashmir we need to diversify because there are a lot of states in india which have climate similar to jammu kashmir so if saffron can be grown in jammu kashmir why not there so especially northeastern states the climate is very similar to jammu kashmir in jammu kashmir saffron is grown in a places called kareva karevas are the places where saffron is grown in jammu and kashmir what are kareva karevas are the highlands which are located in jammu and kashmir and saffron you know seeds are cultivated during the month of june and july and at some places in august and september also it starts flowering in october and Kashmiri saffron, the Kong Posh variety of saffron also got the GI tag last year. The Kong Posh, Kong Posh is the name of a place. So Kong Posh saffron of Jammu Kashmir got the GI tag. So Jammu Kashmir is trying to partner with Sikkim for cultivating saffron. Now let me tell you a very interesting project which is called Saffron Bowl Project. Have you heard about it? Saffron Bowl Project. So there is an institute called Nectar, N-E-C-T-A-R. Nectar is an institute which is based in Shillong and Saffron Bowl project is Jammu Kashmir is trying to help Arunachal Pradesh and Meghalaya in growing saffron. This is known as Saffron Bowl project. So Saffron Bowl project can also be asked in the exam which is the implementing institute Nectar. What is Nectar? Northeast Center for Technological Application and, and, and Reach that is called nectar nectar is trying to have saffron cultivation in arunachal pradesh and meghalaya so saffron bowl project is being implemented in arunachal pradesh and meghalaya and nectar is an institute that works under the ministry of science and technology right so not just sikkim but even in arunachal pradesh and meghalaya jammu kashmir is trying to grow saffron and this project is called saffron bowl project which is running in arunachal and meghalaya let's move on then by the way i will add one point here there is a saffron from pampor there is a place in jammu kashmir called pampor so the pampor saffron is recognized as a globally important agricultural heritage system gihs pampor saffron recently in which of the following state 
foundation stone was laid for South India's first nano urea liquid plant. South India's first liquid nano urea factory has been set up by IFCO in Bengaluru in Karnataka. In Bengaluru in Karnataka, this factory was inaugurated by Mansuk Mandavia, the Minister for Chemical Fertilizer, and Basavaraj Bombay, the Chief Minister of Karnataka. Investment is approximately 350 crore and this plant can produce 34 crore bottles per year. Again, one bottle is for 500 ml. Is it understood? And the first overall plant was set up in Kalol in Gujarat. This was India's first, but South India's first in Bangalore. The National Conference of State Agriculture and Horticulture Ministers was held in which city? It was held recently in Bangalore. National Conference of State Agriculture and Horticulture Minister. You can see Narendra Singh Tomar. He attended. He inaugurated. His constituency is Morena. And what was the what is the main news from this conference? So recently there is a platform that was launched called Enam Pop. What is POP? Pop. It is called Platform of Platforms. Why it is called like that? So you know what is Enam, right? Enam was formed in 2016. It's a platform for buying and selling electronic national agriculture market it is connected to all these mondays apmcs right now there are different platforms so enam is only about buying and selling but a farmer is not only concerned with buying and selling he requires other things also for example he requires logistic support he requires technology he requires analytics farmer also requires transportation so lot of food processing for example packaging so farmer requires a lot more services and for these services there are basically different services right that a farmer requires earlier there were different platforms for all of these now there is only one platform called enam pop so 41 service providers which used to provide different services 41 service providers from multiple platforms which provided a, a whole range of value chain services like trade, quality assurance, cold storage, market intelligence, transportation, logistics, they will now be on one platform. So a farmer does not visit, need to visit multiple platform. 41 service providers from multiple platforms are now on one platform called Enam POP or platform of platforms. That is why it is called platform of platform and it was inaugurated during this conference. Which conference? National conference of state agriculture and horticulture ministers that took place in Bengaluru. Who among the following has assumed the charge who has become the chairman of Khadi and Village Industries Commission KVIC and KVIC works under the Ministry of MSME headed by Narayan Rane. So Manoj Kumar has, has become the chairman of KVIC. Earlier the chairman was Vinay Kumar Saxena but he has now become the lieutenant governor of New Delhi. Is it understood? So Manoj Kumar is the chairman of KVIC. And KVIC was set up, it's a statutory body, it was formed in 1957 during the second five-year plan. And the job of KVIC is just to promote Khadi in India. Now Khadi was launched in 1920 by Mahatma Gandhi as a political weapon for the Swadeshi movement. And Khadi has now become very popular. right? And let me also tell you some of the initiatives of KVIC recently that maybe it could be asked in the exam it can, it is it is important now kvic the first project is the bold project bold bold project was started from udaipur this is essentially a project in rajasthan and what is bold project so in bold project what kvic is trying to do is it is trying to grow bamboos on very very arid land very dry land so the full form of bold project is bamboo oasis on lands in drought this is the full form and this project started from Udaipur in Rajasthan essentially this is a project of Rajasthan only second project of KVIC that you should know about is they have set up India's first Tassar silk Tassar is a very very high quality silk so India's first Tassar silk yarn production center has been started by KVIC in Katak in Odisha and there is there is a another project India's first mobile honey processing van mobile honey processing van was launched by KVIC in Ghaziabad 
So these are some projects of KVIC that maybe you should know about. Yarn Production Center. There is also the Bold Project. And uh, Bold Project was started from Udaipur in Rajasthan. Is it understood? Okay, let's move on. Recently, there is a company called Syngenta. Syngenta has partnered with which of the following institute to launch the Biodiversity Sensor Project? What is Biodiversity Sensor Project? In Biodiversity Sensor Project, they will observe the behavior of insects which are on our agriculture farms, especially bees and butterflies. They will observe the behavior of... There is a technology, Biosensor Technology, is a technology for monitoring biodiversity that is study the behavior of insects around our farms especially bees and butterflies and it has been done in partnership with IIT Ropad. Now let me tell you one uh, IIT Ropad is in Punjab in Ropad is a wetland also no Ramsar site. Now Syngenta company is also the first private company to get approval from Central Insecticide Board they have launched the insecticide called Amistar which is suitable for you know paddy crops it protects the rice or paddy from fungal infections blast disease and sheath blight and the name of the insecticide is amistar and this amistar they are spraying using drones you know the first drone yatra of india was launched by syngenta company they want to travel 10000 km to educate 10000 farmers about spraying of drones spraying of insecticide using drones because when farmers spray insecticide themselves it is very dangerous for their health what is the name of the shifting cultivation that is practiced in Telangana and Andhra that was in news recently so it is called podu podu shifting cultivation basically shifting cultivation also called jhum cultivation sometimes ghum cultivation it's detrimental for the forest so it is practiced by the tribal community what they do is they go on a uh, they uh, go to a forest land and there are a lot of trees here so they burn the trees down to clear the land for the agriculture then they do intensive farming here for two to three years and when the soil becomes deficient in the minerals then they go to some other place and repeat it as a result of shifting cultivation forest are uh, the forest cover reduces because they are burning the trees to make the land available for the cultivation or agriculture so similar practice that is uh, practiced in Andhra and Telangana is Podu and what the government of Andhra and Telangana trying to do so especially Telangana they are trying to shift these people from the core areas of the national park and wildlife sanctuary to the buffer areas a lot of tribal people they live in the core areas also there if they start doing shifting cultivation the biodiversity will be harmed because they will be burning down the forest so that is why Podu was in news recently recently Niti Ayog has joined jointly launched the mapping and exchange of good practices initiative for mainstreaming the millets in Asia and Africa with which of the following so 2023 by the way will be celebrated as the international year of millets by United Nations and in India 2018 was celebrated as the national year of millets right millets are of many types there is bajra which is called pearl millet there is ragi or finger millet there is a sorghum or juar so there are different types of millets available in India millets is a collective term for small seeded annual grasses that are cultivated as grain crops mainly in the dry areas so Niti Ayog has partnered with the world food program for mainstreaming the millets in Asia and Africa because our diet is mainly wheat and rice based but we need more millets because they are more nutritious and secondly millets can be grown even in the scarcity of water they are highly climate resistant Recently, which of the following has become the first private company to be awarded a government contract for the opium processing sector? So this is Bajaj Healthcare. In India, you can't use opium for recreational purpose or entertainment. You can use it for, for medicine. And there are a lot of medicines like painkillers are there, cough syrups. There are a lot of medicines in which the opium active pharmaceutical ingredients are used like painkillers, cough syrup and even some cancer drugs they use a lot of opium because it alleviates pain. Now what is this entire process let me explain. So first the opium is grown by the farmers then the government sends this opium to their plants 
and these plants of government are located at two places one is Gazipur and one is Nimach now Gazipur is in UP Nimach is in MP Madhya Pradesh and Gazipur is in UP why what are these plants called these are called government opium and alkaloid works so they extract alkaloids from them and then these alkaloids are used for pharmaceutical products recently which of the following state government and United Nation Development Program they have announced data in climate resilient agriculture or DICRA partnership so the DICRA partnership is between Telangana government and UNDP which is headquartered in New York the answer is Telangana what is this partnership DICRA partnership is the farmers of India they will be given lot of data lot of analytics so that they can make informed decisions they can protect their crops from climate change they can protect their livestock from climate change so DICRA provides open access to both the data as well as analytics to the farmers through an open software and it will help the farmers adopt technology this platform DICRA is powered by artificial intelligence right so and DICRA will collect this data using remote sensing and pattern detection algorithms it will identify those farmers farms which are resilient to climate change and those which are highly vulnerable and it will tell the farmers accordingly what they should grow what they should not grow so it will help towards strengthening food system and food security in India who is the head of the recently constituted committee by the Union government on minimum support price to make it more effective and transparent this committee will be headed by Sanjay Agarwal minimum support price minimum support price what is the Swaminathan formula for minimum support price MS Swaminathan is known as the father of green revolution in India and father of green revolution in India MS Swaminathan says that farmers should be given 150 percent or 1.5 times of their input cost understood so if a farmer has uh, you know has spent 1 lakh rupees for growing something he should be paid minimum 1.5 lakh this is the minimum support price that should be given to the farmers 150 percent or 1.5 times but what is the problem the problem is in the calculation now MSP in India is given for how many crops it is given for 23 crops I repeat MSP in India is given for 23 crops not 22 some websites have written it wrong it is 23 crops whenever you have a doubt always see the official website MSP is subject of Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices or CACP which works under the Ministry of Agriculture and if you go to the official website it says 23 commodities which are these so seven are cereals like paddy wheat maize sorghum pearl millet barley and ragi five are pulses gram tur moong urad and lentil seven are oil seeds groundnut rapeseed mustard soybean sesam uh, sesamum sunflower uh, safflower and niger seed and four are commercial crops copra sugarcane cotton and raw jute and if you add these it becomes 23 7 and 5 12 and uh, 7 19 and 4 23 so MSP in India is given for 23 crops now another important thing MSP you can calculate it MSP is of three types okay what what is the three types of MSP that we have in India so we have a2 a2 plus FL and C2 and CACP considers A2 plus FL for giving 150% or 1.5 times A2 plus FL is considered so A2 is what A2 is simply the input cost of the farmer the direct cost like the seeds farmer will spend money on what the seeds the pesticide insecticide and the hired labor and irrigation and water and whatever that is the direct cost that is the a2 a2 plus FL now farmer farmers entire family they also do labor so that also has a cost if farmer was not doing agriculture on his own land he would be doing it somewhere else so he his minimum wage that needs to be added so a2 plus FL is a2 plus farmers family labor and then we have C2 so what is C2 C2 is a2 plus FL plus the land cost so if the farmer was not doing if the farmer was not doing agriculture on his land he can rent the land or he can sell the land and there will be some interest he will get so if the land is one crore he can put one he can sell the land for one crore he can put it in the bank account and he can get five percent on FD so this five percent is foregone because he is doing agriculture so that cost also needs to be added 
So A2 plus FL plus land cost is called C2. Is it understood or not understood? And CACP reckons only A2 plus FL for returns. For actual money they give to the farmer is based on A2 plus FL. Okay. But C2 cost are used for mainly benchmark referencing by the CACP. So these are the three types of MSP that we have in India. Haryana government has collaborated with which of the following country to set up a center of excellence for breed improvement of animals in Hisar. So they have partnered with Brazil. What is this entire thing? Now the king of Bhavnagar, Bhavnagar is a beautiful place in Gujarat which is also being developed as a container hub. Now the king of Bhavnagar, he donated the Gir breed of cows to Brazil in 1911. And this Gir variety they improved and Brazil created their own variety called Girlando. So today Girlando is a very famous cow from Brazil. It gives 15 liter of milk every day. But very few people know that Girlando is actually an improved variety of Gir cow that was given to Brazil by the king of Bhavnagar in the year 1911. Similarly, Haryana has lot of important cows like the Sahiwal variety, like there is the Rathi variety of cow, there is Murra and all of these. Uh, Murad uh, Jamplasm is also available. Basically, what they want to do, what Haryana wants to do is, Haryana wants to do the same what Gujarat did. Haryana wants Brazil to help them in improving the varieties of mainly the Sahiwal and the Rathi cows. Right? So this is what will be done by Brazil. Recently, which of the following ministry has launched 14 Honey Farmer Producer Organization? By the way, how many FPOs we want in India, we want our target is we should have 10,000 farmer producer organizations in India. And recently 14 honey FPOs have been launched, right, by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. By the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. And they also want to make sure that even the farmers get minimum support price for honey production. Honey is an agriculture ag allied activity and it is called apiculture, growing of honeybees for wax. For, for honey, it is called apiculture. So, 14 honey FPOs were set up by TriFed. TriFed is what? TriFed is Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation of India. And uh, it has been set up recently. And we want to have 10,000 FPOs. In fact, FPO program was launched in 2020. And beekeeping, what is the name that we give to it? Sweet Revolution. Sweet Revolution. We also have a National Bee Board which is a part of the National Beekeeping and Honey Mission. And Honey Mission. Let's move on. Which of the following has been declared as an essential commodity by the central government? So there is a law that we have in India called Essential Commodities Act of 1955. So soya meal is an essential commodity. Soya meal, you know, if it is declared as essential commodity, it means what? It means that the unfair practices like holding of the soya meal, black marketing will be stopped. So this will enhance the availability of soya meal to the farmers, especially the dairy farmers. Because soya bean meal is an important protein source for the farm animals. And it represents nearly two-third of the total world output of protein feed stuff that is given to the uh, animals. Who has been reappointed as the chairman of CACP? Commission for Agriculture Cost and Prices that gives MSP. Who has been appointed as the chairman once again? Reappointed as the chairman. What is his name? His name is Vijay Paul Sharma. Vijay Paul Sharma. Let's move on. Which of the following organization has launched India's first mobile honey processing van? Now I told you mobile honey processing van has been launched by KVIC. And it was launched in Ghaziabad recently. The first mobile honey processing van was launched in Ghaziabad. And it can process 300 kgs of honey in 8 hours. 300 kg of honey can be processed in 8 hours. It's a mobile testing laboratory. It is a mobile processing laboratory and also mobile testing laboratory. Because it can examine the quality of honey also. How many total ODOP, one district, one product brands will be developed under PMFME scheme? So how many brands? 10 brands. And let me show you the table. It has those 10 brands. So for example, the uh, Amvla from Gurugram will be sold as Amritfal. The Amvla from Gurugram 
This is a brand that they have created, Amrit Fal brand. Similarly, the whole wheat cookies from Delhi are being sold under the name Delhi Bakes. Makhana, Darbhanga and Muzaffarpur, Makhana King is the brand. From Kota, we have Coriander brand called Kori Gold. From Saharanpur, we have Madhu Mantra, the honey brand. Similarly, Som Dana from Thane, Som Dana. Then we have Kashmiri Mantra, which is the Kashmiri spices from Kulgam. We have Madhur Mithas from Muzaffar Nagar. Again, it's a honey. We have Anaras, which is this pineapple uh, pickle from Reap Hoi in Meghalaya. And we have Pind Se from Amritsar. So all of these are brands that have been created. Right? All of these are the brands which have been created. What are these brands? Kori Gold, I told you, is coriander powder. Makhana King is uh, Makhana. I don't know what is Makhana called in English. Uh, Delhi Bakes is the whole wheat cookies. Amrit Fal is the Amla, Amla juice exactly. Madhu Mantra is a honey, multi-floral honey. And Somdana is what? So Somdana is a millet flour. Kashmiri Mantra is the spices, the red chili powder from Kashmir, Kulgam. And uh, they, these, you know, so 10 ODOP brands have been created. Now you understand what is the advantage of this? Okay, let's move on. Who among the following will head the 10 member committee of the ISRO to explore the feasibility of the adoption of technology in the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. See, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana has not done too well, to be honest. It is a centrally sponsored scheme, but it has not been able to achieve the objectives. Very few people have um, taken this scheme. So, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana asks the farmers to pay a premium. Of Obviously, it is an insurance scheme, crop insurance scheme. If the crop gets damaged, the government pays. But the premium is also there. So, for the Rabi crops, the premium is 1.5%. For Kharif crops, it is 2%. And for the cash crops, it is 5%. This is the premium under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. And now, ISRO has set up a, a committee, 10 member committee to explore how we can use technology in Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. It will be headed by K.R. Manjunath. K.R. Manjunath. And let me tell you that there is one more committee that has been set up by, uh, by the government. It is called Saurabh Mishra Committee. So there are two committees actually. And what is the job of Saurabh Mishra Committee? Saurabh Mishra Committee will do the cost-benefit analysis of the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, right? The, for example, agriculture insurance, um, co-insurance, they will try to analyze different models, profit-loss sharing models in Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana to make it more attractive for the farmers. Which of the following states has set up India's first bamboo village? India's first bamboo village has been set up. It is called Katla Mara. And it has been set up in Tripura, in West Tripura district. By the way, bamboo is a grass. It is not a tree. It comes in the family Poesi. It is also called as green gold. And this is the first bamboo village of India. In local language, they are calling it Bash Gram. Bash Gram. It has been set up on 9 acres of land. And 14 species of bamboo are a part of this project. Who among the following has been appointed as the new chairman of IFCO? Indian Farmer Fertilizer Cooperative, Dilip Sanghani is the new chairman. He is the 17th chairman of IFCO and he will replace Mr. Balvinder Singh. Now, IFCO headquarters is in New Delhi. IFCO was founded on 3rd of November 1967. Which of the following village is the first milk village of Jammu Kashmir? So, this village is called Jerry Village, Jerry Hamlet. Hamlet is a small village. So, Jerry Hamlet, it is in Riyasi district of Jammu Kashmir. It is the first milk village, milk surplus, I mean. And uh, integrated dairy development scheme worked here really well. What is integrated dairy development scheme? So in integrated dairy development scheme, there is a huge subsidy, you know, that the government provides. For example, if you want to buy different things like milking machine. So milking machine or bulk milk cooling machine then you get 50% subsidy from the government up to a maximum of 5 lakh. If you want to buy a paneer making machine, khoya making machine, dahi making machine, cream separator, all these machine, ghee making machine, maximum subsidy you will get 3.5 lakh. 50% to a maximum of 3.5 lakh. 
if you want to buy a milk van you will get 50 percent subsidy to a maximum of 2 lakh and if you want to open a milk atm then you will get a subsidy of up to 5 lakh so like that different subsidies are given 50 percent subsidy is given to a maximum limit of different limits for different products that i have told you recently under which of the following mission agri nutri garden week was celebrated agri nutri garden week was celebrated from 10th to 17th of january 2022 under din dayal antyodaya yojana national rural livelihood mission so the answer is din dayal antyodaya yojana national rural livelihood mission and this is a scheme of the ministry of rural development ministry of rural development this scheme was launched in 2011 so what do they want to do how many nutri gardens we want to set up in fact we wanted to set up 7500 nutri gardens in this week because it is the 75th anniversary of india's independence so 7500 garden and how many did we set up 76664 so we set up 10 times of our target <laughs> what is a nutri garden simply you grow crops in your garden that will enable your food security and if your food security is there obviously if every person in the village does that it is the village security ultimately it is the security of the nation so we want to promote the concept of nutri gardens in india and uh, this will help in food security right so we want to establish 78 lakh agri nutri gardens in india over 78 lakh is what the government is saying is it understood okay so that was a long video but there was a lot of explanation required agriculture current affairs are never easy but i tried to uh, bring to you the kind of my in my own style where i give a lot of extra information and my current affairs are never limited to the main question so this was only set one and tomorrow morning first thing what i will do i will upload set two and set three so that you get a complete coverage i have prepared three sets of agriculture current affairs i have worked really hard to bring this video to you on time for the last three days i've been doing research detailed research and i've been collecting agriculture current affairs from magazines from newspapers so do give this video a like if you liked it do put in a comment below and do share it with your friends this video was designed for icar exam upsc exam and the exam of nabard etc basically any exam of india which requires agriculture current affairs i'll see you very soon in part two keep enjoying this coverage my name is dr gaurav i'm signing off i also teach current affairs on my mobile app every day if you want to study current affairs from me link is in the description below there's a very small fee around thousand rupees per year that i charge for my current affairs services and i'll see you in the class take care